hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our cigar box ukulele build. Well now that everything is dried up, you can just remove all of your clamps and we can move on from there. At this point, our box is really solid. You can feel a huge difference between what it was before our bracing went in and what it is now. But we have a bit of an issue. And what that issue is, is our lid doesn't close. And just by feeling around with your fingertips, you can tell where the problem lies. And for some reason, I can feel it here. This block here is extremely raised, as is this one and this one right here at the front and those are what is preventing our box from closing so i'm going to get um, a chisel and we'll trim these down just to get them flat and flush with our outside bracing well truth be told i tried the chisel and it was very awkward i was marking up the sides of my box uh, so i've decided against that and i'm just going to use this mini scraper and we'll carefully scrape down each one of these blocks to get them flush. Now I am tearing out a little bit here at the on the end grain. I'm not too concerned about it because this after all is just the support blocks that will allow us to screw our lid closed. So a little bit of tear out here isn't so bad. I'll just chamfer that with a chisel afterwards. Well, just something to take notice of is that it may feel perfectly flush around the outside edge here, but if you take a straight edge of some kind and put it across, hopefully that you're seeing that we have quite a gap over here. This rocks back and forth onto the end of our block. So while this is flush, this is still proud. So you want to continue with a trusted flat edge or a steel ruler or a square or something like that to go across and bridge our two support pieces to make sure that none of our corner blocks are interfering. And once you get it done right, there should be no rocking at all on your block. It should be completely flush all the way across. We'll do all four of them now and make sure that everything is the way it should be to allow our lid to properly close. And with a little bit of effort and patience, you can make it so that your box closes properly again. Well, it's difficult to cut a sound hole unless you know its position. So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw a center line along the length of our cigar box uke. So this box is eight inches wide. So we'll just place a center line at four inches all the way along. Now you probably have problems seeing that, but we have our center line in place. We now need to clamp our neck in place where it's supposed to be. Well, it's not exactly clamped, but it is placed where it goes, so I'm okay with that. You now want to place your fretboard roughly where it's going to go there as well. So. This is where we have to do a little bit of measuring. I'm not going to get too much into the measuring for the bridge because that will come later. But from the end of your headstock here to the 12th fret, you need to measure that dimension. And that's seven and a half inches. You will then take that seven and a half, measure from the 12th fret down, and that is pretty much the position of our bridge. So the distance from our fretboard to where our bridge goes, this is the area here for your sound hole. So you need to be able to place your sound hole in that area centered in there. 
So I'm going to place a mark right here at the end where our fretboard ends. And as well, I'll just get a square here and just roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, but just roughly, we're going to place a light line there to represent roughly where our bridge goes. And I'll just double check that measurement here just quickly. This is just a rough measurement at this point, guys. We're not trying to do it exact. We just need a rough guesstimate of where our sound hole is going to go. And this looks like the area that I'm working with. So what I want to do now, I want this to be animal themed. And this is what I want for my sound hole. So I've cut out a template out of quarter inch MDF. I've placed center lines on it. And we're just going to line it up in between our marks so that it's roughly centered there. Just like that. And once we get that in place, we're just going to use our template to mark out our sound hole. Now, although this instrument will be used primarily electrically, I'm hoping that this sound hole is going to give it some acoustic properties. I know it's difficult to see, but we have our grizzly paw marked on there. I'm going to drill some blade entry holes, and then we're going to take it over to the scroll saw, and using a number two spiral blade, we're going to cut our sound hole out. Well, the reason I chose a spiral blade for this is because I don't want to separate our lid from our cigar box. It's very difficult to try to spin this piece on the scroll saw while using a conventional blade. So with a spiral blade, it cuts on all sides of the blade, all 360 degrees. So essentially you can just move your piece on its X and Y axis, acting almost like a human CNC machine and cut out your sound hole that way. Now that you have your sound hole cut with a small piece of 220 grit sandpaper, we're just going to go in here and just take any burrs off that are on the inside of our sound hole. With our sound hole cut, it's now time to mark for where our neck is going to go. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get a center line placed on our neck here so that we know how it aligns left to right on the body. We will also be measuring as carefully as we can the center of the end of where our headstock is going to go. We will be measuring the center there and placing a vertical line there. So here's the thing, our ukulele neck has to be flush with our soundboard or the lid of our cigar box because eventually our fretboard is going to get glued onto there and it has to transition seamlessly right across the body. So we want to make sure that we are perfectly lined up and perfectly flat. And the way that I'm going to do that is with this three quarter inch piece of MDF. All we have to do is put our flat surfaces down, line up our center marks, and we can screw this together. But we're going to screw 
or sorry, we're going to drill some holes first, some pilot holes, so that we know where our screws are going to go. So some careful measuring here. We will mark our pilot holes in our neck where we will put three screws to hold our neck in place. Now with those holes marked, we'll just give them a little center punch to help align our drill bit when we drill our pilot holes. And we will do the same with the holes that we have marked on our neck. Now I can't tell you the measurements here because I don't know what neck you're using, if you're making your own or if you're gonna use a commercially available one like what I have here. So just measure carefully and you should be fine. Okay, so we're just going to drill some pilot holes now for some number eight screws. I'm not sure of the length, probably a two inch screw for the ones that are closer to the fretboard and maybe an inch and a half for this back piece on the heel of our neck here. Now you just want to be careful drilling these pilot holes to make sure or try to get them as straight as you can. And now we'll do a test fit by screwing it to our box. And for this little tight quarters, I think I'm going to end up using a bit that equals our screw as well as a ratcheting wrench. Little tight quarters like this, it makes it just a little bit easier to install. Now before we put the other screws in, we just want to lay it down on our MDF and make sure that it's going to be flush. We still have to screw this other one in quite a bit. It looks like we've got about a one eighth of an inch gap there. No problem. We'll just tighten it up and get that set. And then we can put in our other two screws. There we go. That pulled in beautifully. <clears throat> so let's check it now to make sure that we are flush here with the body of our uke. Well, it's a little low actually. It's just a little low, but it looks like, I'm thinking that once I get those other screws in, it's gonna pull it in tight. Um, we can check it with our fretboard just to see how that's gonna line up. You know what, all in all, I think this looks like it's gonna be right on the money by the time everything gets screwed together. So let's get those other two screws put into place to hold our neck onto our cigar box uke. Well, before we go much further, we just wanna make sure that our neck is square on here. So we're going to measure at the top of our neck up by the headstock and put a mark at the center, just a little tiny tick there. And then we're gonna measure at the bottom and put a center mark, just like that. And then at the bottom of our cigar box uke, we're gonna measure it, we said it was eight inches, we're going to place a little mark there. And if we take a straight edge, those three marks should line up all the way along. If not, then we're not square to the body and we've got ourselves a bit of a problem that needs to be corrected. So we'll just take our straight edge, line it up at that center mark there. And this center mark here at the bottom of the neck and it should automatically be lined up with our mark at the base of our body and it is which is good news to me because I didn't really want to mess around with it if yours is not if it's off or it's crooked and that sort of thing you'll need to take off the neck and sand very lightly sand the base of the neck to make it so that it sits at a different angle as well here you may want to check with your straight edge to make sure that your neck is actually square 
or flat with the body of your uke. And mine is actually out a little bit. The headstock looks like it needs to come up about a sixteenth of an inch. So that is something I'm going to have to address and uh, for that it's just a matter of sanding this down just a touch just to tilt it back up and get it into place. So I'm going to do that off camera. It takes quite a while to do. You have to take your time and uh, once I get that finished I'll come back and I'll see you. Once you're finally happy with your next position and how it's flush with your body and square to your center line, you want to trace around your neck here because what you're going to need to do is carefully using a knife you need to cut away and we're going to cut away this paper here so that we actually have the wood of the box to glue to when we apply glue to the neck. So I'm just going to carefully trace around it here and then we'll cut it out. Now in case you're wondering, six times is what it took me to uh, adjust this neck. I ended up removing it and reinstalling it six times uh, until I had it the way that I wanted. So it is a process, it takes time. Just be patient and you'll get it. It just, as I said, it just takes some time and patience, that's all. Well, to finish it off, I've just taken a very sharp chisel and carefully removed any little bits of the label that were left. And that will leave just the hardboard there for our glue to uh, absorb into and, and basically give us a good glue joint there. Well, now that we have that done, we're happy with our neck position. We're happy with the way it all lines up. We need to turn our attention to the inside of our cigar box uke. And for that, we're going to need a little bit of black paint. Well, you can see with our Grizzly Paw sound hole that the white of the cigar box inside shows. And I don't know what you think, but I think it's an eyesore. So I would rather have this black so that the bear paw or the Grizzly Paw shows as a black cutout on this bright yellow body. So. All we're going to do is on the inside of our cigar box, we're going to paint this bottom section here black. Okay, so that's all the paint I'm going to apply to the interior of the box, but I decided that I do want to paint the inside of the cuts of our bear claw. So I've got a smaller brush for that and uh, make sure you have a rag handy in case you leak some out onto the outer surface of your cigar box ukulele. You'd hate to have black paint marring your front yellow finish. And with those edges painted, it really makes that stand out. That looks spectacular. So now it's time to put this aside and let it dry. And uh, we're gonna make a sandwich actually. So what I have here is my two inch piezo pickup and there are two uh, problems with piezo pickups. Number one is they're very prone to feedback and number two is they're also very prone to handling noise. In other words, if this gets mounted directly to the soundboard, um, you tapping on the instrument or handling it or moving it or rubbing your hands across it can transfer over to your disc and then from there be amplified. So what I'm going to do in order to dampen that is we're going to make a piezo sandwich. And I have two pieces here, three inches by three inches of one eighth inch thick. This is basswood. Um, you want a really light wood. If you don't have basswood and that sort of thing, get some balsa wood from your local craft store. It'll do the exact same thing. So we're gonna mount this in the middle, right here like this. Um, I'm probably gonna cut out a little bit of a groove in this piece for our wire. And once I get that done, we'll put some wood glue around the outside, make our sandwich and clamp it together and let it dry. 
And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Um, we've made some great progress with the sound hole and painting the interior, trimming the uh, supports to make sure that the lid sits flush, getting the neck installed as well as flush and square with our body, and now, of course, our piezo sandwich. Um, guys, there's a lot more to come on this build, and we're going to start getting into making the bridge as well as a decorative accent on the headstock, and then, of course, the installation of the fingerboard or fretboard, um, and then the final installation of everything and getting it all put together. That all comes next week, guys, and I hope you're going to join me for that when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.